So whether you need to throw your PC into a backpack or just prefer to have a really minimal desktop system, the Velka 3 is a case that you should definitely know about. So after reviewing so many PC cases, it's always really refreshing when something unique arrives on the review table, like the Velka 3. This is a four litre PC case, which makes it about as big as a standard length ATX power supply. I mean, take a look at that. That is just really insane to think about. Full PC power supply. I mean, you can't game with this. Uh, the other thing is that, don't be confused, this isn't just a case for APUs, for example, so Ryzen APUs. You can actually fit up to an RTX 2070 in this thing, which is absolutely mental. That makes this a potential powerhouse of a gaming PC. So the Velka 3 is from a rather new small case company called Velcase, but I don't think they're going to remain small for very long if they keep producing cases like this. They also have the slightly larger Velka 5, which can accommodate graphics cards up to 297 millimeters. So even full length cards like a two slot RTX 2080 Ti will be no problem there. Review on the Velka 5 will follow in about a week, so do stay tuned for that. So let's start off with a size comparison against some other cases under the 10 liter threshold. From left to right, we have the Velka 3, the Skyridge 4 Mini, the Velka 5, the Dan A4 SFX, and the Ghost S1. One thing I love both about the Velka 3 and the Velka 5 is the vertical orientation. It's a much more minimal approach to a desktop gaming system, reducing the overall footprint on your desk and leaving room for other things. The Velka 3 is easy enough to fit into a regular sized backpack. I would say it's just about as easy as the Skyridge 4 Mini. The exterior is completely aluminium, the side panels are sandblasted, and the front, top, and bottom panel is a single piece, that panel is brushed. And actually, the Velka 3 and 5 share a very similar design language and aesthetic to the Skyreach 4 Mini, so if you're a fan of that minimal, unbranded aluminium exterior like myself, you'll definitely like this case as well. Build quality is also very solid, despite the Velka 3 being light as a feather. One small gripe I have for the exterior is the approach to screws for the side panels. Countersunk screws are used, but the holes in the side panels themselves aren't countersunk. So I really hope this is an easy fix for future revisions. Another thing are the corners for the side panels, which aren't rounded or a perfect right angle. They're kind of just roughly cut. So quality control here definitely needs to be improved as well. Like I said, Velcase are a new company, so hopefully we can see these small issues ironed out over the next revision. The case does use a 300 millimeter riser cable to flip the motherboard and GPU back to back. At this point, the riser cable is not included with the case, so it will need to be purchased along with it, bringing the total cost to $120 US. Alternatively, if you have a 300 millimeter riser cable already, you can just buy the case alone for $80. That might sound like a lot for what it is at first, but for a small production run aluminum case, that is actually quite good. Now being such a tiny case, there are of course going to be some compromises. And let's start with the GPU, which in my opinion is the smallest compromise of this build. Graphics cards up to 183 millimeters are supported, which means that you have two RTX 2070 choices available here from either Gigabyte or MSI. Also, only CPU coolers up to 37 millimeters are supported here with a dual slot graphics card in the other side. So in this case, I went with Noctua's NHL9i, but you can configure this case with a single slot graphics card, which would allow you to run a 52 mil CPU cooler. In that configuration, you could just go with an APU build with a Ryzen 3400G, for example, and leave the extra expansion slot for two and a half inch drive mounting if needed. With the NHL9i though, you're still able to comfortably run a 6 core i5 9400 at full tilt with no issues. So, for gaming, I believe this is absolutely sufficient. Power supply compatibility is a bit unique here, but that's required to get the case to such a low volume, where the Velka 3 supports flex ATX power supplies up to 150 mils in length. For my build, I went with a 400 watt 80 plus gold unit from FSP, which is overkill for this build in terms of output, but thankfully, it does have an 8 pin PCIe connector for the RTX 2070, and that's a bit hard to find on lower output flex ATX units. I'll leave a link to this specific model down below, but we'll talk more about this power supply towards the end. Now you've got a little extra room at the top of the case for two 80mm fans for some additional airflow, or you can install a two and a half inch drive here, that's up to you. 
For this build, I just went with a single M.2 drive for storage, and given how cheap M.2 drives are getting, I don't think that's too unrealistic. All right, now building in this case is not intuitive at all, so you will need to refer to the user manual that you'll find on their website, but overall, the build process is pretty simple. So your Velka 3 build starts by readying your motherboard like shown, so make sure that you've got your cooler, memory, and M.2 drives installed. Next, you'll need to grab the motherboard tray, screw down the bottom left side with an M3 screw, and then use standoffs to secure the other three points. Double check that you've got the correct length standoffs by stacking the included 30mm, 8mm and 5mm ones. I mistakenly used longer standoffs for my initial build and I ended up snapping one of them clean off. Next you'll want to install the riser cable like shown and then install the IO shield for the motherboard onto the rear piece of the case. Out of the box it is configured for APUs like shown so just remove that extra bracket to make enough clearance for a dual slot graphics card. The bottom left hook on the motherboard tray can be slotted onto the tab on the frame like shown, and then the rest of the board can be lined up with the IO shield. Then you'll want to flip the board onto the face of the cooler and then awkwardly install your GPU. I say awkwardly because there aren't the usual slots that you'd find to hold the GPU in place, and you'll also need to unscrew the riser cable to connect it to the GPU. You'll also want to screw the motherboard standoffs to the frame to temporarily hold it in, otherwise it'll feel like your motherboard and GPU are just sort of floating. The next step and the hardest step is installing the power supply and routing the cables. So the installation is pretty simple. The Flex ATX unit slots in pretty comfortably at the bottom and secures with two screws, but the cable management about to follow will take some time. Now, if you don't mind ketchup and mustard cables in plain sight, then don't worry, just slide the final panel on and you're good to go. Otherwise, it is a good idea to spend the next 15 minutes or so using the included Velcro ties to manage things a little bit better. Now, I'm no cable management ninja, but I managed to get my Velcro 3 build to the point where most of the cables were bunched up directly between the power supply and the front panel so that they weren't exposed in the rest of the build. And I've got to say, the result is definitely a rewarding one. I'm really happy with how the finished build looks, even with the side panels off. It is really hard to believe that inside there is a 6-core CPU, an RTX 2070, two 80mm fans, and the 400 watt power supply is fully internal, no need to carry around an external power brick. Gaming with this thing was really surreal because you're pushing so many frames and having a near flawless gaming experience, but that performance is coming from what is basically the size of a brick. Taking a look at CPU and GPU thermals now, they were basically as I expected, right in check with the Skyreach 4 Mini using the same components. So thermals aren't an issue here seeing as the case is both incredibly small and well ventilated. If you do go with the top two fans, I'd recommend setting a pretty conservative custom fan curve as these aren't very quiet and I doubt they provide a significant improvement to thermals anyway. Beyond this insanely fun build though, there was one big problem. That ridiculously high noise, believe it or not, is not coming from the CPU, GPU, or the top fans, but instead the power supply. The Flex ATX unit uses a 40mm fan to provide airflow to the circuitry, and despite being well under the output limit, this thing gets unbearably loud when it's under a gaming load. Now, I initially thought this was due to my cable management, seeing as to hide the majority of the cables from sight, you guys saw that I bunched most of them up in front of the power supply, and that kind of blocks the fan. Oddly enough though, even when removing the cables away from the power supply fan, it still gets pretty loud. So that's definitely a problem and I think the only solution here would be to swap that fan to a lower noise option from Noctua. The power supply itself didn't seem to be getting that hot at all either, so I think a simple fan swap would work quite well here and it wouldn't be too hard to do. If you need something quieter, I'd definitely go for the Skyreach 4 Mini. It's a bit bigger at 5 liters, about $80 or so more expensive, but power supply noise is non-existent seeing as you can go with an external power brick. You can go with a completely internal power supply setup there too, specifically the HDplex 400 watt AC to DC. I've heard that unit is still relatively quiet, but I'm not sure if the RTX 2070 Minis will still fit in there along with it. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the Velka 3. Overall, this is a really impressive small form factor case and the RTX 2070 in this thing, I mean, cramming that much power into a gaming PC this small, uh, that's just really insane to think about. But of course, there are going to be some hiccups along the way, as you guys saw, with this sort of intensity of size constraints. So the first one being cable management, it's just not as easy as you would find in something a little bit bigger. And the second one being that pretty annoying power supply fan. It's 
pretty much necessary, I think, to swap that fan out to something like a 40 mil Noctua. I'm not sure which options are the best, but definitely do some research on swapping that out. If you are interested in the Velka 3 or the Velka 5, I will leave them linked down in the description below. As I said before, Velka 5 review will be next week or so, so definitely stay tuned for that. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.